This is eCopy Share Scan 5.2, database lookup extender with LDAP lookup to block user access. Hi there, my name is Chris Fierce King. I'm a senior manager with the sales and engineering team in Nuance Document Imaging. I have responsibility for the UK and Southern sales engineering teams. I've spent 11 years with uh, with NDI, formerly eCopy, and my core competency is eCopy Share Scan. Um, those of you that know me would know that I'm a player manager, consider myself to be a player manager, and today I'm going to take you through a specific configuration with eCopy Share Scan and the database lookup extender. I'm just going to cover uh, a quick introduction into Nuance Document Imaging, and then we're going to go into the solution overview, and lastly, we're going to cover a video demonstration. So much of a professional's job is spent working with documents, whether creating, editing, collaborating, managing, printing, or even capturing information from them. And even seemingly small inefficiencies in document workflows can add up to big problems for businesses. If you just think about your own experience for a, for a moment, you'll recognize that documents and document workflows are a real problem. For example, think about the time you spend looking for the right document, or even trying to recreate information um, that's contained or locked into in the hard copy. While businesses have mostly taken measures to improve, improve the storage and management of the most critical documents, there's still big room for improvement in many other document-related areas. And the key problem is that businesses don't have control over their office document and workflows. And without control, uh, inefficient workflows can cost businesses money and waste time and reduce productivity. Most importantly, the solution must be intuitive for users. If a solution is too difficult for a user to use, then they just simply won't use it. And as a result, compliance with processes and information controls will fail, and business process workflows will remain insecure and inefficient. So today, we're just going to introduce to you eCopy Share Scan, um, with a, which is an efficient way to collaborate, capture, and edit documents within a work group. And specifically, we're going to target a specific business process. For opportunities that call for a solution to solve collaborative workflow issues, eCopy is well positioned. The eCopy user experience is best suited for users who need to capture hard copy documents into workflows where the information is being shared with their associates or colleagues. For these users, operating a scanner and using scan workflow software is not a core function of their job. Thus, they need a solution that presents to them a consistent, standardized, easy to learn workflow that ensures they can successfully com complete the operation entirely whilst at the MFP. And eCopy does this with fail safe features like document preview, real time confirmation and providing a consistent workflow. We have some main capabilities, some of which are shown on the screen at the moment, and I'll highlight a couple of these. Uh, the front panel preview is, is fantastic and allows uh, instant feedback to the user that, that they're doing uh, something correct. We have a wide range of, uh, of workflows, including Scan to SharePoint. We can have user-defined workflows. We have uh, a, a real wide gamut of scan to mail capabilities, including uh, uh, hosted on-premise and, uh, and hosted off-site mail solutions. We can convert hard copy into accurate and editable soft copies. And of course, we, we uh, support searchable PDFA. So let's look at the solution overview then. So what we've, what we've got configured here today is ShareScan 5.2. We're using a database lookup extender. It's a configuration to query an LDAP repository and check group membership of the logged on user. And access past the previous screen is denied if the user is not a member of a specific set of groups, which is defined by the ShareScan ad administrator. The database lookup configuration, uh, or DLE, database lookup extender configuration, is split into four separate parts to make it easy for the administrator to, to manage on an ongoing basis. So rather than one big block of code, we're actually split it out into these four component parts. The first part is where we configure the LDAP uh, repository. This might be your Active Directory. And in my case, my LDAP server or my Active Directory um, domain controller is 10.10.1.1, .1 its IP address. Second, I've actually defined the teams. I've got two teams. I said that either the administrators group or if you're a member of the GRP underscore GB uh, for Great Britain, ECM, Enterprise Content Management underscore Teams, um, uh, from, for the purposes of the, of the demo. If you're a member of either one of those two groups, then you'll be let, uh, let, uh, you'll be let past. If not, you'll be denied. We have um, a check group membership piece of clo a code, a block of code. Basically, we're taking the system default .ecopy username, which is um, the username we get if you've authenticated um, through session logon. So whether that's ID services or cost recovery, as long as we know um, who you are on the network, then uh, then this code will work. And lastly, we check we check the names 
uh, or of, of the teams that you're a member of, the groups, the security groups that you're a member of, against the list that the administrators defined. And if you're uh, not part of the group, then we'll show you uh, a, a, an error message. An example would be um, shown in red, and this is what the user would see. So in our demonstration, we're actually going to put a, uh, an error on the screen. You are not permitted to scan to this location. Please contact your administrator and the required group membership, um, and we show the two teams. So that's it from a, uh, a user experience perspective. We're going to go now into the solution overview uh, video demonstration, and uh, hopefully that will give you a really good understanding of how this thing hangs together. OK, so this is a demonstration of being able to block a group of users. Uh, that uh, group is configured in Active Directory or an LDAP repository from being able to successfully complete a scan with eCopy Share Scan. I'm just going to begin with a demonstration of, uh, of, of what the user sees at the device, and then I'm going to go through the configuration. Uh, the reason uh, for, for doing it that way around is that I can show you, of, of course, exactly uh, uh, what it looks like, and then if you're really interested in how that's configured, um, you can uh, continue watching the, the video. So what I've got here in front of me is I've got the eCopy Share Scan Administration Console in the background, and then I'm going to go through the configuration there. I've got something on the left-hand side, the eCopy Services ID emulator. Um, I'm going to show you where to find that in, in eCopy Share Scan, so you can perform your own um, demonstrations if, if you would like to. I'll just go ahead and just tick a couple of boxes <coughs> just to keep this connection alive and keep it uh, topmost on, on the screen for, for the purposes of demonstration. And then on the right hand side, we've got the eCopy Share Scan Scan Station client installed on this server. Um, I, I personally like the Scan Station client um, for, for performing demonstrations. It, it looks quite nice as opposed to the, the web based simulator that's built into the product. Either will do for, this, uh, for the purposes of this demonstration that I'm going to take you through. So we're, we are simulating with the emulator. We are emulating or simulating someone walking up to a device and presenting their card um, and those credentials being passed either by ID services or cost recovery um, to the scan station. And the scan station you will see is unlocked. So first of all, I'm just going to hit connect. You can see we'll log on as student 01. You very briefly see student 01 um, in the log on there. And I've got one single button here, scan to network. I'm going to go ahead and push scan to network. You'll see we'll preview the document. And when I hit next, we're going to check the permissions on the, on the network. And we can see that this user, student 01, is receiving an error message. I can't do anything but uh, put push OK. And it says that you are not permitted to scan to this location. Please contact your administrator. <coughs> and the required group membership is GRP, GB, ECM teams, or administrators. So if you're in either one of those groups, you should have been able to continue, but this user isn't, and, uh, and therefore we're going to stop. So we're just going to click home, and we'll log out, and we'll tell the emulator to log out too. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and change the configuration. I know that student 02 is a member of um, the GRP uh, ECM teams, uh, GB ECM teams, and so I'm going to connect. I'm now logged on as student 02. I'm going to scan to network, and when I hit next, this scan should just go all the way through, and I should just be able to continue and log out and, and end. So it's a very simple demonstration, but a very powerful demonstration that we can stop a user from continuing a scanning operation if they're not a member of a specific group. So I'm going to start now just by going to show you how to uh, how this is configured. So if I exit the emulator, <coughs> and we'll just exit the scan station client. So in ID services in ShareScan, we've got the identification node on the left hand side under services. We are able to configure this, and this test button here actually brings up that emulator. So that's how you find the emulator, and you can. Uh, configure this in your own environment or your customer's environment if you want to test something out specifically. But my server is 1010.1.4. Um, my IP address, which is the scan session client, which is installed on the same machine, is also 1010.1.4. And my, student, uh, my username, I was switching between student 1 and student 2. That's really easy to, uh, to, to run up a demonstration um, like that. 
we're actually performing these lookups using the database lookup extender. <clears throat> now, the name database lookup extender sort of suggests that it's just used for database lookups. And in, in fact, that's not true. You can um, configure the database lookup extender in a number of ways to look at LDAP, <coughs> web services, um, perform a number of different lookups, um, including looking up a database. But today, I'm just looking up an LDAP server. So if I just go through the configuration, I double click on LDAP server, I've defined my LDAP server as 10.10.1.1. So if I actually switch over to my Exchange server, which is also my Active Directory, which is 10.10.1.1, you can see that my student 01 is a member of just normal domain users. And then my student 02, which was allowed to scan, is actually a member of GRP, GB, ECM teams. So that uh, that would explain why user 01, uh, sorry, student 01 wasn't allowed to scan and student 02 was allowed to scan. So switch back. So um, that's my lookup. That's just telling the uh, the software where, where the LDAP server is. Then the next, um, the next uh, stage is to configure the groups that you want uh, the user or require the user to be a member of in order to proceed. And so I've got GRP, GB, ECM teams, and administrators. And they're separated by a semicolon. The next item of code, this actually does a lookup. And um, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't con consider myself as a programmer, but just about uh, able to read through this, where I can take the um, the system uh, default eCopy username. So this is where the user has identified themselves with ID services or cost recovery. And we're going to check the, the SAM account name in the LDAP repository and pull back a list of, uh, of groups that they're a member of. And then lastly, we're going to compare them to the groups that we've uh, specified. And if, they're, if they don't match, if we don't find a match, then we throw this exception and show you are not permitted to scan to this location. Please contact your administrator. And um, we also actually show them the required group memberships. And, and you can modify this uh, if you didn't want to display those groups um, to your user of the device. So very, very easy, very simple code. LDAP server, the groups you want to be a member of. Um, we've got a piece of code that does group the, the actual checking um, of what groups the user belongs to in the LDAP server. And then we do a comparison of those groups and, and throw the exception. So very, very simply, we've, um, we've managed to um, stop a user from scanning. So just go and have a look at that connector. Very, very simple configuration. And uh, I'll just very quickly show you. So this is a scan to network. It's just a, uh, this one's just a quick connect, but it could be any, any of the connectors. It uh, would activate that database lookup extender straight, yeah, straight after the preview. And you can see that my LDAP group check has been enabled. And so that's really it. Very, um, very simple, but very powerful configuration for ShareScan. That's the database lookup extender, ShareScan uh, version 5.2, and uh, just being able to look up your group membership in Active Directory or, or in LDAP and uh, stop a user or stop a group of users from, uh, from being able to scan. Or on the flip side of that, sorry, um, being able to allow a specific group of users to scan to a location that the rest of the community may not. My name is Chris Fish King, and you've been watching uh, a video from uh, the Nuance Document Imaging Team, and it's uh, December 2014.